what an amazing day. Was this not absolutely incredible? I have goosebumps. I have goosebumps from that, from that poem. It's incredible. You know, speaking of goosebumps, I spent the last two weeks in the Amazon jungle, the last two weeks with some incredible young people in the Amazon. It's up on the screen right now if you could see it from my computer because it's plugged in, but you can't see it because the slide's going right now. There we go. These four incredible young people, 17, 18, 19 years old, trekked for over 100 kilometers for a week through the Amazon jungle, sharing their experiences with 16,000 students that followed their every move every single day with live broadcast, streamcasting into classrooms, the whole nine yards. River crossings, it was amazing. Exactly what I thought the rainforest would be. This has got to be the coolest day of my life. I'm just, I'm on cloud, cloud nine right now. This is awesome. I want to go back, though, in time a little bit. I want to go to 2006, if I can, and start there. That Check this out. It is the most unforgiving place on Earth. Over 3.5 million square miles. A vast wilderness. It is the Sahara Desert, with people and cultures as unpredictable as the landscape. Running 50 miles a day, it's the challenge, it's going the distance, it's just pushing myself to my limits. It's never been done. No one's ever run that far in that period of time. That will be tough. It's a mental thing, I think. Imagine running 50 miles per day for more than 100 days in an unprecedented personal challenge. Three ultra runners, good friends, test physical strength and mental toughness running across the entire Sahara Desert. They're such high-end athletes. They're used to pushing themselves, but they're going to be pushing their bodies more than they ever have in the past. We've had injury. We've had sickness. Sorry, dude. The best thing to do would be to stop for the day, but we have to cover some miles today. Any Americans found there without proper paperwork are going to be considered spies, liable to execution. Well, we're yeah. going to have to make the best decision for us as a team. It's so difficult for me because the personalities are so different. I don't want to push us into the ground, obviously, but I'll push us damn close. This is, you know, a lot tougher than you could have ever thought. You can do this. You don't want to quit. Okay. <laughs> we saw a young boy, seven or eight years old, in the desert alone, fending for himself while his dad was a two days walk away to get water. That's the water situation. I mean, it's so much bigger an issue than I would have ever thought. Narrated by executive producer Matt Damon and directed by James Mall, a personal and compelling journey into the world's most mysterious wilderness. The purpose of the three of us coming here was to learn more about each other, to learn about the people of the Sahara, and to do something that hasn't been done before. They all three agreed that if one runner went down, they would be out of the expedition. I thought your commitment was different than that. When is the end? The end is when we get to Cairo. life-changing experience and not just for the three runners for everybody who's along on this journey okay right on well I'm gonna carry on with these slides they're a little bit dark right now if you guys can adjust the color thank you on November 1st 2006 my two best friends and I set out on a journey that people said was absolutely impossible we ran across the entire Sahara Desert 4,500 miles 7,500 kilometers in 111 days six countries some basic stats on this expedition. As I said, 111 days, that was averaging 70 kilometers of running per day without a single day off. Probably the most difficult part of the expedition, as I noticed some of you already noticed. Two showers the entire time we were out there. So guaranteed in the worst sandstorms, we were not going to get lost because we were so funky. You could smell us from anywhere. I mean, it was crazy. But you know, this expedition was more than a run, a first ever across the Sahara Desert for the three of us. But it taught us many incredible things about our world and about ourselves. For example, that in Northern Africa, clean drinking water was a luxury for many people. There was a water crisis in Northern Africa that to someone this big, clean drinking water was a luxury, was a mind blowing fact for us to learn. I mean, also, I mean, we ran 7,500 kilometers and learned so much about ourselves. Beyond the water and the context of that and how that expedition became about that, we learned that we as human beings totally underestimate what we're capable of doing. 
We totally underestimate it. I mean, take, for example, when I stood on the shores of the Red Sea after 111 days of running, to put my hands in that water, I had started running just a few years before that, the age of 35. Five years before that, I was smoking a pack a day. I mean, and then I did this. My wife and I and my friends got together after this epic run across the Sahara and said, if there was a way that we could connect this with young people, because I knew what it was like to be 16, 17 years old and feel like I had nothing in front of me. I was the last kid always picked in gym class, still can't skate or throw a ball. I mean, you know. But I was that person who felt totally unfulfilled almost my entire young adult life. But this expedition taught me something completely different. And it taught me that we can make a difference in the world if we apply ourselves. What if we could create an organization that would use adventure, interesting stories as a backdrop to bring social issues and experiential learning, create learning programs that would actually make learning fun again? We engage a whole generation of young people. So we started this organization called Impossible to Possible, and we headed here to the top of the bottom of the world, the geographic South Pole, and we trekked there for 33 days and brought thousands of students along for the ride with us. Every step of the way, as we hauled hundreds of pounds of gear and food, everything that we needed to make our 33-day, 23-hour, and 55-minute world record journey to the South Pole. But as I said, the crux, the interesting part of this expedition was not any world record. It was the fact that we were able to connect it to classrooms all over the world and share every step with them, answering questions all along the way. It was an incredible experience for us. It was an incredible experience for our thousands of teammates that were in these classrooms all over the world. And it proved to us the power of bringing an adventure into the classroom and the classroom onto the adventure. It was life-changing for us. It was life-changing for them. We decided that we needed to up the stakes and make it even more interesting and compelling. It's one thing for me to go and trek to the South Pole and share it with classrooms. It's another for their peers, students in the classrooms, their peers, to go and do the same things. We put together a team of youth ambassadors in 2009. This team of youth ambassadors would trek 100 kilometers across Baffin Island, totally unsupported, carrying everything that they needed, of course, again, sharing the experience day to day with students in classrooms all over the world. Now, what was so powerful about this is we used a platform this time of climate change. We talked about how our Arctic, Canada's Arctic, is changing and how the people in the North are adapting to those changes. That was the topic of discussion. And so in this most incredible and mesmerizing of places, we had a classroom in the Arctic, a classroom in the outdoors. Lessons were taught by our educational director, Dr. Ewan Affleck, and those lessons were broadcast into the classroom and Q&As were created using technology in ways that it wasn't actually meant to do, like the satellite phone attached to the MacBook, getting us those signals into the classroom. We were answering those questions about the topic that we were discovering and learning about while we were out there in this classroom. It was absolutely incredible and trust me, if you could see these photos the way the color actually normally is, they are beautiful. But I think you get the idea of what an incredible landscape our Arctic is. This field that you see here is actually a brilliant red. It's unbelievable. Seeing in their eyes the achievement of doing something so incredible, of, of uh, completing an adventure that was so monumental, and being able to share that day to day with students in classrooms, sky's the limit. I mean, really, it was an absolutely incredible experience. And then this past April, something even more amazing happened. We included a challenge-based component to this whole experiential learning program. We said, okay, we can talk about issues such as water, we can talk about issues such as climate change, bring it into the classroom, but what if we empower students in classrooms by challenging them to do something about it after they've experienced everything they have here? Four students, ages 17 to 20, ran a marathon a day this past April in Tunisia. A marathon a day across the Sahara for a week talking about and learning about water. So they did challenge students in classrooms all over the world, close to 10,000 of them, and said, hey, listen, we are going to stream this expedition. We're going to learn about water as we make our way. We challenge you guys to do something about it. Make a difference. And students responded because they had the tools, and they said, yeah, we're down with it. Let's build some wells in Africa. And that's exactly what happened. As our youth ambassadors were running across this massive dry section of Sahara, isn't that awesome? Look at it, check this out. It's just totally wicked. As they made their way across northern Africa and learned about the water situation in that part of the world from the people that lived there, they shared those experiences day to day. Shared the experiences of meeting with nomads, of meeting with men like this, Mohammed Iksa, among the Tuareg, this, this man, Mohammed Iksa, among the Tuareg people. 
This guy knows the Sahara Desert better than anyone in the entire world. You can go anywhere in the Sahara with Mohammed. Rolling with Mohammed in the Sahara is like rolling in New Jersey with the Sopranos. You can go anywhere. This dude, it's amazing. And he would teach them about the desert. Every day they would start out from their small camp and they would do their run. They were tracked. They had a tracking beacon on them. And students in classrooms, it was amazing the time at which students, we'd see them logging in and checking out, you know, what was going on? Where are they? How far have they made it? You know, reading the educational curriculum that was created by our team. All of this, by the way, at no cost to schools or to the youth ambassadors that are on the expeditions. Sharing in this story of water, them reciprocating with us, they're sharing their stories of how they're fundraising and meeting their goal to build these two water projects that we had aimed for in Africa. It truly was an incredible expedition, but as I said before, there's the element of being out there and actually experiencing it, of, of sharing what you're learning about yourself. These four, I mean, they climbed insurmountable obstacles in making this happen. Physically, it was unbelievably difficult. We heard about Africa before. The Sahara gets very hot, 50 plus degrees. Some days unbearable, some days seeming like they weren't going to finish, but they did. They not only shared this expedition with students in classrooms, they shared this expedition to the world because you see, they would do video journals every single day that while they were out there, we would edit those video journals, upload them to CNN, and they, boom, became instantaneous, very positive role models and media celebrities with what they were doing. It was an incredible experience to see from all points and from the classroom and see how that classroom's was taking the inspiration and the action of these four as they made their way across the Sahara and applying it. Check this out, part of the expedition. Again, I wish it was clearer for you, but... Yeah, it'll turn out. Came to an oasis here in the middle of the in desert. In a well. In a well. And... And this is, this is the stuff, this is what we're talking about. This is exactly what Ryan's Well Foundation and what Giving Water Foundation, that's what we're trying to raise money for. This is a well. This is, this is the this stuff. That's what it's all about, this oasis here. Um, there are some people you can see with um, water jugs over there. I don't know how far they come to get this water, but um, this is just incredible, this oasis. And um, I'm Seeing what young people are capable of, witnessing it, when we're on these expeditions, seeing the power that young people have to make a difference, especially this generation now, it's incredible. You provide youth with the right tools, you provide youth with a mission, and they'll totally rise to the challenge. I've seen it here. You know, they say, they say that you cannot see into the future. Well, on these expeditions and through these web portals, I've seen into the eyes of this generation. And I can tell you, this generation is up for some incredible challenges and they will make an amazing difference in this world. There's no doubt about it. I, you know, I gotta tell you, the future looks incredibly bright. And I see a generation of young people in this world right now that have the capacity to make the impossible possible. Thank you very much. Thank you.